So today's tour, we're going to look at the Gothic Library, which is currently the headmaster's study. And so only the really good or the really bad tend to get in and see the inside of the Gothic Library. But before we go in, I'd like to point out some indications of what style the library is in and the architect. So if we look at the windows either side of the door, we can see that they're slightly tinted in orange and that gives you an indication of who the architect might be. He always liked to light up his dark spaces using coloured glass. And in the central door, again the panelling shows not neoclassical like the rest of the house, but gothic, very unusual style at the turn of the 19th century. So if you'd like to follow me inside, you can decide if you've been good or bad. So just before we go into the main library itself, I'd like to show you a few areas of interest in the ante-chamber, the room before the library. Above the main door here, we have a beautiful plaster frieze that shows the Battle of Bosworth from 1485, but we now think it's actually a piece of Tudor propaganda. So we have either side of the battle itself, we have Henry VII, uh, who marries Elizabeth of York on the other side. And then right at the bottom of all the fighting figures, we have Richard III scrambling for his crown. Now this was put here to try and link the Temple Grenfell family back to royalty. And in fact, most of their links came back through their wives rather than through themselves, because they were just sheep farmers from Warwickshire who became very successful under Elizabeth I. Another indication of who the architect might be is by looking at these stairs here. As we sweep up looking at the stairs, we can see fan vaulting and little figures supporting that fan vaulting. And then if we look a little further up, we can see a little cupola letting light in all the way up, borrowed light to light the staircase. So this was another favourite way of lighting a room from this particular architect. So let us go into the library itself. So here we are in the Gothic Library, the only known Gothic interior done by Sir John Soane, a very famous architect at the turn of the 19th century. This room itself dates from 1805 and it was built to house a collection of Saxon or Gothic manuscripts that were brought by the Marquis of Buckingham from Thomas Assel when he died um, as a collection of very famous and well-known Saxon manuscripts. So behind all these doors here, there would have been the manuscripts and at any one time there were 2,000 books held in this room. Now the style itself is based on Henry VII's chapel at Westminster and we can see this fan vaulting drawing up to meet in the centre and the canopies over the fireplaces are made out of lead to give it a little bit more structure. There was a tale that John Soane said that he wanted to create a little bit of interest in the ceiling and the Marquis wanted his coat of arms spread all out over the ceiling in order to show that he came from royalty. And Sir John, John Soane suggested that it was just captured a little bit neater in the centre. So here, in the centre of the ceiling, we have 726 armorial bearings that show how the Temple Grinville family can link themselves back to royalty. But as I said before, most of this comes via their wives rather than through them themselves. Now, John Stone created three pieces of furniture for this room, one of which is in a private collection, one is in the v &A, and one piece we have been loaned by Brighton Pavilion Gallery and Museum. So this beautiful piece of ebony and ivory is created especially for this room and this was found in a flea market in 1976 before somebody realised what it was and gave it to Brighton Pavilion. 
and we're very lucky to have it on loan today. Now there's these rooms along this enfilade or the line from one door to another is a little suite of rooms that would have been the Marquis's summer rooms. So that if we open up one of these doors here, we can see it links through into another room. So there was a dining room, a drawing room, this library and a bedroom. And finally, although we feel that we're underground on one side of the corridor that we have just come through, when we come to the front of the room, we can see that we have one of the most beautiful views in England as we look out onto the landscape gardens for which Stowe is most famous for.